Good evening. You are perched there on top of a pair of Nordic walking poles with a day pack, a small day pack holding you up. So hopefully you stay right there. Otherwise you'll be toppling over down into the creek below. Finishing up a weekend, a rather beautiful weekend, considering last Saturday, a week ago, it was 35 degrees and being pelted with snow. So it's now 70, upper 70s, 80, I think it got 84 degrees today. And it is starting to cool off. It's going to be a nice evening. With the warm weather has come the mosquitoes and flies. The ticks, thankfully, have retreated. So very few ticks at this point, as opposed to a month ago when you couldn't walk without picking up quite the, quite the assortment of wood ticks and deer ticks. And it's those deer ticks, or the black-legged tick, that seem to be the problem, at least from a disease standpoint. The deer ticks, both the adults and the nymphs that you pick up routinely on early morning or early spring walks, carry the Lyme's disease and ehrlichiosis and a couple protozoan diseases. They're nasty little buggers, at least in my opinion. Mosquitoes I can handle. I can swat them. Ticks, I don't really care for them. I am on the Ice Age Trail in Washera County. The creek you saw is Weddy Creek, and this segment is called the Weddy Creek Segment. It is a fairly short segment. Came up from the Chaffee Creek segment, which is south, west and south of here. Um, as you walk towards the Weddy Creek segment, you're in a glacial outwash plain. You're also in a moraine complex. I believe it's the Elderon Moraine Complex, which is really a series of moraines that formed as the glacier retreated. This particular, the farthest extent, is called the Johnstown Moraine, or Terminal Moraine, and then the Elderon Complex formed on top of that. So they say. And so they say this little area that you saw, the Creek Valley, was really the formation of a glacial lake. As the glacier was retreating, the meltwater had nowhere to go because it was retreating downhill. So the water built up around the face of the glacier. And depending on east-west movements or north-south movements, however it was, would wear away the soils in particular patterns. So this would have been a glacial formed lake at one point. Today it's a trout stream, spring fed, cold water. Um, this particular stretch is pretty flat and shallow, but it does narrow down and get into some cutout banks. It's a nice, nice little stream. Tonight I am smoking Hopefully you can see that. Sillum's European Blend Copenhagen. 
a taste you'll never forget. And that's about all that says on it. There's a sticker which basically says Salem's Copenhagen pipe tobacco, 1.75 ounces, 50 grams. Made in Germany, imported by F and K Cigar Company. US. So what's in it? That's a very good question because I haven't found the correct answer, or at least a suitable answer. Every site I've looked at says there's Burley in Virginia, and I agree with that. But there's also some dark tobacco in there. And it's that dark tobacco that becomes the major question. Depending which site you look at, it could be Perique, it could be Black Cavendish, it could be both Perique and Black Cavendish, and a couple sites, I guess it was one site, a German retail site, said there's also dark fired Kentucky in there. I can sense what I think is Perique, so it wouldn't surprise me if there is Perique in here. Black Cavendish, maybe, but I definitely seem to get a peppery, Perique-y spiciness, spiciness with this tobacco. The Dark Fired Kentucky, maybe, I doubt it. I can't, I can't sense any smokiness of, of a Kentucky. As far as the toppings, most of the sites call it amaretto and nuts. And I get that. Um, I do pick that up. I think the nuttiness comes from the burley. The amaretto gives it a good top note. A room note is wonderful, very sweet. But I don't taste excessive sweetness and if you could see the ash it's a fairly dry ash it burns without goopiness so it's a very pleasant light aromatic now two of the sites two of the german retail sites said the top note or the flavoring is cherry i don't get that at all And if it's cherry, it's unlike any cherry I've ever had. I also pick up cappuccino. I get hints of coffee in this. And it's not because I drink coffee, I drink tea primarily. Very nice, very nice tobacco. I find myself going to Silum's Copenhagen blend quite quite frequently. Um, it's a good tobacco. If you're looking for a light aromatic that has a good room note and not a heavy sweet taste to it, it's a pretty good tobacco. I am smoking it in, and you probably are failing light. I don't know if you can see that. It is a Lovat of no name. Uh, the only marking on it is imported briar. There are no fills in it. It's a, it's a solid little piece of briar. Who made it? Don't know. When it was made, I can only guess it says post-World War II, um, based upon the imported briar stamp. But a cute little pipe. Yeah, 
Sillum's Copenhagen. Definitely uh, one of my favorite tobaccos. Since we are trailing the woolly mammoth, that is the channel you're on, I thought I would bring to you today a tamper in the shape of a woolly mammoth tusk. Well, maybe not. But it is a white-tailed deer antler ta tamper. With a pick and a scraper. Um, I made this out of a white-tail antler shed that I found. It was in pretty good shape. It had been gnawed a little bit by by probably mice, um, but the tine that was on it was in pretty good shape and it was about the same size as a traditional pipe tool, so I, that's what I decided to make this one into. I have made other antler tampers that are carvings, figurines, they're primarily tampers. They don't have picks and scrapers on them. Perhaps there'll be a video on pipe tampers. since that collection continues to grow along with the tobacco collection and the pipe collections. So seems it's a everything pipe smoking has growth potential. Unless of course the FDA gets its way and completely eliminates all tobacco use in America. We shall see what August brings or when the rules go into effect. So that's about it for today. Um, thought I'd give you a shot of the creek. This is a, as I think I said, it's a spring-fed creek, so all along this ridge here, kind of on a the top ridge here of almost looks like a tunnel channel, but it's a little bit different, differently formed than a tunnel channel. But there's a lot of little spring seeps, and I'll perhaps give you a shot of one right down at the base of this ridge. Okay, take care. Hope all is going well, and perhaps I'll see you again.